Hello, fifth graders. It's Miss Anderson here to teach some more math this week. So here are our at home classroom norms. It says have a positive attitude when you're watching these videos. Be respectful to the teacher and to yourself because some of these things are new. Keep trying even when it gets hard. Friends, remember that some of these uh, math concepts are going to be new to you. And even if they're hard, keep trying and ask your teacher for help. So our learning target for today says, I can use a ratio table to divide. The last video you watched was about using arrays to multiply and divide. That is also a model that you can use in any of these problems. However, I'm going to teach you to use a ratio table today. You can decide between an array or a ratio table for yourself. So this video will help you with thinking about division page 262. We are going to do number 1a together. Then we will also be doing division with fractions, page 264. We will be doing number 1 together. So this is all about using ratio tables to divide, to divide whole numbers and to divide fractions. So we are going to do number one on thinking about division, page 262. I've blown it up big on our um, board here. So it says, show your strategy and answer in three ways. So remember, you have to use a model. You can use an array. Today, we're going to use ratio tables in this video. You also need to use words and an equation. So this is good checklist to make sure that you did all three of these things. So I'm going to use a ratio table. I also have to use words and an equation. So let's read number 1a. How can you use 1,100 divided by 11 to help you find 1,089 divided by 11? Now I'm gonna use a ratio table over here and then leave this space for my words and my equation. So I have to figure out 1,000 and 100 divided by 11 first to even figure out how it connects to 1,089 divided by 11. So I'm gonna put 11 seems to be our number in a ratio table. One and 11. Now friends, that was a little smoother. Now friends, I want to try to get to 1,100 first. Let's start with the nice round number that we know how to multiply by. 11 times 10. 11 times 10 is 110. Now our next number, nice round number to multiply that gets us close to 1,100 would be 100. So when 100 times 11 gets us exactly to 1,100, just like when we were doing powers of 10, friends, when you multiply by 100, you are at, you are putting, uh, moving that 11 up to place values. So those zeros become placeholders and you have 1,100. Now that we know 1,100 divided by 11, equals 100. I can put that over here as one of my equations. Now, how does that have anything to do with 1089 divided by 11? Well, I think that it's, it's a little bit less than 1100. So what if we did one less than 100? What if I try 99 times 11? Now, all I did was subtract one. I'm going to use a different color for that. If I subtract one from the top, this number on the bottom, I have to subtract 11. So there's one on the top subtraction. I have to subtract 11 on the bottom. Subtract 11. So 11 minus 1,100. I know 1,000 minus, or 1,100 minus 10 is 1,090, so one less than that is 1,089. Oh. So friends, this really helped us 
because 1,100 divided by 11 is 100, we know that it's just one less. So friends, we can say 1,000 divided by 11 equals 100. And then I know that 100 times 11 equals 1,000. 1,011 divided by 11 is 100. So 100 times 11 is 1,100. So you know 99 times 11 equals 1,089. That helps us to figure it out. So in words, I could write 1,089 is 11 less than 1,100. So we know it is one group of 11 less. Which gets us one group less than 100 is 99. So this is subtract 11, subtract one group. All right, friends, let's try it with our next one. Now we are on page 264, division with fractions. You can see that they already gave you the ratio table here. So we are going to do number one together, and I'd like you to do number two and three on your own. Number one says, Alice is filling candy molds with chocolate for her brother's birthday party. It takes her six minutes to fill one-fifth of the mold. How long will it take her to fill all of the molds? Complete the ratio table to show the answer. So friends, we know it takes her six minutes to fill one fifth of the molds. Now I have to think, how many fifths is it going to take to get to all of the molds? I know that she would have to fill five fifths to get all of the molds. So how do I, what do I multiply by to get all the molds? I know one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth, five of those would get me to all of the molds. So I'm going to multiply by five. Because five times one fifth gets us to five fifths, which is all of the molds. Now friends, I also have to do the same exact thing I do on the top or the bottom to the top. So I'm multiplying my six minutes by five. This one is one of our multiplication facts. Six times five gets us to 30 minutes. I could end there, friends, but knowing that this is division with fractions, I want to explain a little bit about what our um, equation would be if we put this into an equation. It would be six divided by one fifth equals 30. Now friends, remember the last video when we were dividing by fractions, multiplying and dividing by fractions, you would take six and you would divide it into fifths and you would see how many fifths are there in the whole number six. There are 30 fifths in six. So friends, another way we can easily do that is by multiplying by the denominator here if it is a unit fraction. So multiplying by five got us to 30 minutes. All right, friends, try those last two on your own. Remember, this is division with fractions, but if you put it into a ratio table, then you can multiply. And it makes it a little bit easier for us. All right, thank you.